Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody who is on the Zoom. Um, I did not, but I will. Um, and then also welcome to those who are watching us. Uh, this is um, Rally for Medical Research that's coming up in September. And we wanna make sure that you guys are able to ask all the questions that you may have. Um, this year for the first time, it's going to be virtual. Uh, which is something that hasn't been done, uh, as far as I know, forever. <laughs> um, and of course, we know it's going virtual due to the pandemic and COVID-19, which is the same thing. Um, and, you know, we want to make sure that uh, your voice is being heard at Raleigh for Medical Research. And um, this is the time for questions. This is the time to join in. This is the time to rally. Um, so I want to introduce two of my colleagues, Mark Johnson and Brendan Leonard, and um, we are part of the Office for Science Policy and Government Affairs, and they handle all things rally. And um, I'm going to turn it over to them to talk about the rally for medical research, as well as talk to some of our past participants. So, guys, this is all yours. Great. Well, thank you so much, Karen. And I really want to give a big shout out to Karen for organizing this event today. Um, you all don't need me to tell you that Karen is awesome, but I'll say it anyway. Karen's awesome. <laughs> um, and I want to thank Carrie, too, for her support of this event. Um, Carrie and Karen are an um, amazing team um, connecting our advocates to opportunities um, to, to learn and get involved in um, whether it's going to the Hill or, um, you know, serving in on a committee or you know any way that they can get engaged um carrie and karen are always on the lookout and so uh, they do a great job of also working with uh, me and mark at, on the congressional relations team and finding opportunities for our advocates to um, either go to the hill or in this case um, go to the virtual hill so that's what we'll be talking about today this is the rally is um, one of many opportunities to to get involved and contacting your members of Congress and talking to them about the importance of medical research. Um, just to give you a quick bit of context, the Rally for Medical Research started back in 2013 with actually a, a huge uh, physical rally here in Washington, D.C. And it brought um, you know, hundreds of people and speakers to talk about why it's so critical to invest in medical research for cancer and um, hundreds of other diseases. And since then, every year we've had a Hill Day where we've had uh, advocates from around the country go up to Capitol Hill, um, meet with their congressional offices and talk to them about um, why it, for them, it's uh, you know, personally important that they continue to invest in the National Institutes of Health. So um, this is a huge event. It's something that the AACR coordinates every year um, with a founding organizer, but we do that in collaboration with over 350 partner organizations. And that really covers the entire scope of everything that's under medical research. So um, this is the first year, as Karen mentioned, that we'll be doing it as a virtual event due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So while we, are really going to miss the opportunity to see everyone here in DC in person. Um, actually, we think this is going to provide an opportunity for a lot more people to get involved. And so if you can uh, participate by phone or video conference from home, we would love for you all to sign up and be a part of the rally um, and, and be a part of this, you know, hundreds of people who are going to be uh, speaking with one voice and one message on that day in support of medical research. So um, today I have the privilege of introducing three um, rock star advocates. Um, these are some amazing. Two anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, it definitely, these are uh, these are three alumni of the AACR Scientist Survivor Program who are all just um, really tremendous advocates. They've been doing. Uh, I'm going to tell you just just quickly, I won't be able to, to, to do them justice uh, because I want to give them more time to speak. Um, but I want to quickly introduce the three of them and then I have um, some questions I wanted to pose to them so that they can tell you a little bit about how they've been involved in events um, like the Rally for Medical Research or similar events and kind of give you a sense of what to expect if you were to participate. Um, and then following that, I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the details, the logistics for the day, 
Um, and then Mark is going to um, give you an overview of a, of a new toolkit, toolkit that we have. And uh, then we'll have time to take some questions if there are any. So um, I first wanted to introduce Dawn Aldrich. She is a co-founder of Solutions Cancer Resource Center, Inc which is a nonprofit center that provides information and assistance to cancer diagnosed clients, their families, and friends. Um, she is a strong advocate for underserved communities, representing their concerns to the cancer research community, and focusing on educating and empowering others. She served as a consumer reviewer for the peer-reviewed cancer research program at the Department of Defense. And among her greatest accomplishments as a patient advocate have been serving as a, as, uh, a patient advocate with the FDA Center for Drug Evaluation and Research and the Patient Engagement Collaborative. And um, through that, she has ad addressed the challenges of access to clinical trials, medical product developments, and other regulatory system issues. Um, and that's a joint effort of the Clinical Trials Transformation Initiative and the FDA. Um, Dawn has also taken her message to Capitol Hill and participated in last year's Rally for Medical Research. So we're very excited to have her as a returning participant. Um, I also want to introduce uh, Lou Lanza. Um, so Lou, after his diagnosis with a non hodgkins lymphoma in 2005, has found many, many ways to be involved in, uh, in giving back and uh, reaching others and touching others who are impacted by cancer. Um, so he's been very involved with the Buddy program at Jefferson Hospital for many years, which has given him an opportunity to interact with patients at the infusion center while they're going through chemo treatments. He became involved with the National Committee for Quality Assurance as a patient consultant for the Patient-Centered Oncology Care Pilot Practice Collaborative. And he's also participated in the Health Mentor Program at Thomas Jefferson University by mentoring students for the Jefferson Medical College. Um, Lou has attended and spoken at um, so many uh, patient advocacy conferences and events um, that I'm not gonna try to list them all. <laughs> Uh, he's been a very active volunteer with the AACR, uh, Cancer Support Community of Greater Philadelphia, and other cancer organizations for their various fundraising events. Um, he's attended the, AAC, the Rally for Medical Research um, for uh, Sydney Kimmel Cancer Center and was a patient advocate for the 2017 Rock and Roll uh, Marathon. So uh, wow. he's also served on the committee for the yearly Race for Hope Philadelphia Brain Tumor Walk in his sister's honor. And he was also recently honored to be selected to the Jefferson Patient and Family Advisory Council. And I'm very pleased to also introduce uh, Diane Nathaniel. Uh, Diane is an elementary school counselor in Brooklyn and a stage three colon cancer survivor. She's a co-founder of the nonprofit organization Beat Stage Three Inc., which is dedicated to raising community awareness about cancer health screening and prevention. He's also a professional inspirational speaker on cancer health with A Speaker International Speakers Bureau. Diane is an ambassador constituent team leader with the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. And in that role, she meets with members of Congress and engages in policy development and advocacy for quality health care for people impacted by cancer. Um, she's also had the opportunity to join with a research team of doctors and scientists from SUNY Downstate and SUNY Stony Brook Medical Center. Uh, this team is researching disparities of GI cancer in African Americans, and Diane is the community liaison. Under the umbrella of Beat Stage 3 Inc., um, she started a Cancer Awareness Protects Everyone or CAPE events uh, program featuring innovative conversations with the community and medical partners discussing the importance of cancer prevention and screening in a stress free environment. Diane feels so strongly about serving her community that she is enrolled as a student at SUNY Downstate, where she is earning an advanced certificate in public health. And I also um, wanted to note, as, as Karen mentioned, that um, Diane was one of our featured speakers on our new advocacy webinar um, that we recorded a few weeks back, and you'll be hearing more about the webinar in just a moment. So um, as you can see, we have a, a really impressive lineup of advocates. And I wanted to start out um, maybe just directing a couple of questions to, to each of you. Um, so maybe Dawn, if you could start, could you tell us about uh, your experience with the Rally for Medical Research and including how did you prepare for the meetings that you were gonna have? And just uh, once you got in the meetings, what was that like? 
Okay, great. Thank you for having me. It's really a pleasure to be able to share on this panel. Um, I initially, when I went to the uh, rally for medical research in DC, um, we started off with meetings. So we were able to prepare in some ways by listening to uh, the different sessions and hearing from everyone's um, experiences and what to expect and also uh, learn about how we should present ourselves and what we should be saying to uh, the representatives. I am from New York, so I was meeting with different um, con uh, Congress and, and senators from my district that serves within my district. But with the team that I was with, we were a diverse team from New York, so I was able to get to meet some of their uh, members as well. Um, the great thing about that is that rallying for medical research includes having the ability to have um, people who understand the importance of robust and sustained uh, funding for these efforts. Everyone was not, I'm for cancer research, someone else was in there for autism, and it was a mixed group. So everyone had their own concerns that were able to present. So what I did personally to prepare for it was I got to know, I saw my list, Chuck Schumer and um, Elliot Engel and different people that were on my list for me to see, I got to know what they were doing, what they were voting for, what they were, what was important to them and things like that, of that nature. I read independently about what they've done in the past and also see, you know, how I can put my own personal story and what I represent in terms of who the people that I'm representing as well and the needs of the communities of the underserved uh, communities where we actually have a, a, a higher need to be able to have access to clinical research and being able to be a part of that because our health disparities are so high. So what I did was in addition to that in, in the meetings and when it was my turn, because we had turns to, to present and, and, and speak and not always would you get to me. I've never met Senator Schumer in person at any of the meetings. I've never met Elliot Engel. I met his staff members who were able to come in and hear our pleas and, and write and take notes. And, and, and also after that, you know, Know, we sent a thank you note. I sent a thank you note. Thank you for you know taking the time out to meet with me and hear my. And I look forward to speaking with you more in the future or sharing more with you in the future about the concerns of of the um, cancer research um, community. So that was something that was really important for me to be able to experience, to be able to know that I was a part of of giving my voice to this particular effort. And that I'm not only just being in my community and, and doing work within my own community, but actually having an opportunity to go to the Hill and speak to those who are our representatives who will be able to make some sort of effective change if they are throwing their full support in, into the things that are uh, concerning of our communities that are in dire need of having access to quality and um, uh, affordable care and affordable access to being able to even be able to participate in certain things when it comes to medical research. So that was a, a really great opportunity for me to be there to share and to meet and to extend uh, and expand um, the networking efforts in the cancer community at large. So that was perfect. Thank you, Dawn. That's awesome. Um, I think you just gave a fantastic summary of like the whole process of preparing for and, and being in a meeting and following up. And I was wondering if you had any kind of any additional thoughts on the impact that you felt that you made um, by being there in those offices and talking, whether it was a member of Congress or a staff, as you said, usually it's, it's, it's a staff member, but those are the folks who really are the issue experts for those members of Congress. Um, how did you feel when you walked out of those meetings in terms of how, you know, what impact that made by you being there? Well, I felt empowered. I felt like I made a difference in it. Interestingly, on my flight back to New York, Elliot Engel was on the same flight with me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I came to meet you today. But 
but unfortunately I didn't meet you, but I was able to meet with someone. And he said, oh, he, he, he you know, gave me some sort of interest in what I had to say and said, you know, oh, please make sure you give me your card. And so we had a quick brief exchange at the airport waiting to get, get onto the flight itself. So that was really interesting. And, you know, I really appreciated being able to meet with that person. So, and let him know I was there to see him today. And, and it was just so funny that I actually met him at the airport uh, at the gate. But um, overall, the staff were really helpful. They seemed so, they were able to give us feedback on what we were interested in talking about, whether it was about cancer research, whether it was about um, cancer funding, anything that we, we brought to them, they were able to engage. In, 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 and that was also important to me because it wasn't like they were just listening to us, taking notes, and then saying goodbye. They were actually saying, and they gave us feedback. Yes, you know, Senator Schumer, he's really interested in this. This is something that he's been working on for so many years. He's voted for this type of funding and we're going to push this forward. And those types of things were really empowering because then it makes me feel like I am a part of this process. I am actually being a part of something bigger and greater than beyond my community that will impact communities at large, not just my community, but community nationwide. So that was also important for me to feel like whatever little marks that we're making individually, together as a unit, we're doing something even far beyond our biggest expectations. So that in of itself was a great experience. Wonderful. I, I think, you know, one of the things that you that you touched on there is the collective impact that we have. And, um, you know, sometimes I hear people ask, well, you know, does it really matter if, if I'm going up there or if I'm calling or writing to my member of Congress, um, you know, and you know, there, there, are, there are other people who are doing it or there are so many other issues that they're dealing with. And, you know, I always say, um, yeah, Congress has a lot on their plate. They have a lot of different issues that they're dealing with. But the reason that we've been so successful in getting funding for medical research over the last five years is because everyone in this community keeps coming forward and keeps saying, you know, this has to be a priority for you. Um, because all, everyone is going up and there are a lot of other important priorities that people are talking about too. But because there's been such a unified message around uh, medical research, we've had so much success. Well, thank you, Dawn. Um, we'll come back to you in a minute, but I wanted to, to now direct a question or two to Lou. Um, so Lou, you are a, a seasoned pro advocate at this point, but, uh, but there was a time. <laughs> Anything for a free meal. <laughs> there you go. But there was a time when this was when this was new for you. So if you think back yeah. to uh, kind of the first meeting, a uh, couple of meetings that you had, um, you know, did you have any kind of fear or apprehension or anxiety about going in and talking to a member of Congress or their staff? And kind of tell us what that was like and how you've overcome it and become such a such a uh, awesome advocate. Actually, the first time I, I was involved going to Washington was with the NCCS uh, CPAT, National Coalition of Cancer Survivorship Cancer Political Action Team. And I was actually on a board member and uh, gave a speech and everything. And I really didn't have any notes. And I just spoke from the heart. And, you know, we're going to you walk, you're going to walk through the halls and see everything we see on TV. And these guys are bigger than life and women are bigger than life that we see all the time. And uh, I just went uh, as Karen and I guess Brandon could attest I'm not exactly an introvert and I, I went uh, I, I didn't go full Lou Lanza but uh, I said uh, these people actually work for us you know uh, we tell them our feelings and our needs and our requirements and uh, they're supposed to act on our needs and uh, a lot of people are affected by uh, all kinds of medical maladies and uh, I, I, my my uh, representatives are Norcross, uh, Menendez, and Booker. I never met Booker. I met Menendez and Norcross. I see all the time. I go to his uh, his rallies and his his uh, uh, town halls and everything. So I'm in a pr pretty personal relationship with him. And Menendez, uh, the staff, actually, I'd go in, especially when we go to the rally for uh, research for the NIH. Uh, I'd go in and I'd be with six or seven other people and, hey, Lou, how you doing? You know, the, you know, some of the medical staff are the same. Some of them change up, but most, you know, I see them two or three times a year, so I'm not exactly a wallflower and I don't really think I can blend in too good, but uh, 
because I always uh, make sure I have my uh, my AACR green on or my tie or, <laughs> mm-hmm. or my shirt or my pants so they know where we're coming from. But uh, really, I, I really didn't have any trepidation talking to the people. I, I, you know, the buildings themselves are all inspiring. Like I said, you, you hear about this all your life. Uh, being with people, I always had a good group of people, the people from Jefferson. Another woman I go with, uh, Claire uh, Farnham, uh, go with her and she uh, usually worked together. You know, we bad cop, good cop, not bad cop, good cop, but she gives the medical uh, numbers and everything. And I, I sort of tug on the, the heartstrings that, you know, everybody's been affected by this. You know, you're funding for the research, you're actually saving money. You know, $10 spent in research could save uh, Two hundred thousand dollars down the line, so it's really not uh, that difficult, you know. And most of the people are are, are receptive to our needs and our wants. Uh, I really didn't have any difficulty other than uh, getting over the, the the sheer magnitude of the of the hill and the the uh, responsibility that these people have. But like I said, I, they work for us and they do what we tell them to do. And if they don't do what we tell them to do, we Next, next one up, next batter up. You know, go to the bullpen. But uh, like I said, most of them are very receptive, uh, very conscious. You got to be respected, respect, very respectful of the office and, and the people involved. But uh, once I started, like I said, I don't know, it was four or five years ago I got started with the NCS, and I, like I said, I now with the rally for the hill and then see uh, all my friends from the ACR. They don't see them in Philly, so uh, get to see them in Washington, even the Washington group people I get to see, like Carrie and Brandon, uh, made a lot of nice friends, uh, lifetime friends, and uh, it's always appreciative to be able to help out. My mother died of cancer when I was 19, I lost a sister to duplastoma, so it, it really reaches out to uh, to my heart. I, it's like, uh, yeah, and the thing with this pandemic, it really kills me, I can't go to Jefferson get involved with patients and I'm missing the, the rallies and the, the races and everything. And I always tell people, I said, you're not just raising money, you're helping raise money for people like me. So everybody's uh, very receptive and telling your survivor and, uh, and, and the, the staff realize that and they always have a story too. They always, it, they seem to come out a little bit and tell you their story. You know, we tell them our stories and everybody's involved in it. So I don't know if I answered your question, but I, yeah. Karen knows I ramble. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you definitely answered it. Thank you, Lou. And I just wanted to say that we, we like it when you go full Lou Lanza. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, you know, you kind of touched on this, but I, when, when we do <clears throat> one of these events like the rally, um, the ACR and our partner organizations, you know, we'll work on putting together the messaging and the talking points so that, so that folks know um, you know, at some point in that conversation, we want to actually ask Congress, you know, please support this funding amount for NIH, yeah. um, you know, in the cu- upcoming year. But as, as you as you really touched on, um, I think the part that sticks with people the most is the personal story. And I wondered if you could just say maybe another word about um, how how central that is to the meetings and and how that is received by the people that you that you talk with? Well, what's also, uh, what's also the, uh, Anna, uh, touched on, uh, we're, we're involved with people from all medical uh, associates, not just when I'm with the NCS, it's all strictly cancer. So you get people with, uh, you know, diabetes or uh, um, lung maladies and not just cancer. So you got a whole conglomeration of, of medical issues that are funded by the NIH. So it doesn't, you're not pinpointing to one specific disease or one specific uh, health health organization, and the cross and and ju- um, just being in the room with these people, like everybody has personal personal story. That's why we get involved with this. Uh, I don't know too many advocates that are. I'm sure there are some nice people. They just do it from the goodness of their heart. But I'm I'm selfish. I'm doing it for for me and my kids, and my grandchildren. But everybody has a story and and we listen to them and they they're really intent they take notes they they listen to our stories and it's a wide range you know but uh, sometimes my eyes sweat when i talk to uh, <laughs> when some of these stories come out but uh, 
it's amazing how many people we get involved with this and uh, how they get their stories across. And, and like I said, even if you do actually get to meet the representative, they're very receptive. They know where we're coming from. We're coming. We're not. We're not asking for to, to build a bridge or somebody's backyard. They want a, a new fence built up or something. We're doing something for everybody, and it's a uh, it's a cause that everybody gets involved with. Blue, red, green, what doesn't matter. It's so it's it's really. It's really not a hard get, but it's I, I'm honored just to be talking with you people here, you by people there. I'm humbled just by being involved with this, but uh, everybody that's involved with it, uh, you know, it, uh, Dr. Fody and although I call her Marge, I, she, I talked to uh, <laughs> Mitch one time. I said, should I call her Dr. Fody? She goes, well, if you ever called her Dr. Fody, she'd probably smack you in the, <laughs> smack you in the head, you know, a good Garetti girl like her. So. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Fody and Mitch and all the people out there, it's uh, it's an experience that uh, you, you can't forget. And uh, I just love being a part of it. And uh, I feel honored just to uh, be able to be associated with a little part of AACR just to be associated with you fine people. Again, well, I don't you. know if I answered your question. You did. <laughs> you did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lou. We're, we're honored to be associated with you too. Um, so Diane, if I could turn to you and um, the first question that I had for you. So you, you spent a lot of time advocating on Capitol Hill and I wanted to ask if you could tell us a little bit more about how those experiences of talking mm -hmm. to the congressional offices have impacted your broader advocacy work. Um, you know, what, what did you come away with from those uh, experiences that kind of helped you as you as you went forward as an advocate. Um, hi everyone, thank you for having me. You guys are so amazing. Um, I think I'm blessed in that I represent the 8th Congressional District and the 57th Assembly where Congressman Hakeem Jeffries is our representative. So that's all I can say for everyone else who is struggling out there. We are just extremely Bless, because he um, he supports cancer and he supports cancer advocacy. He signed on to I, I want to say every bill like the cheetah, the colorectal loophole, um, the ACA, you know, funding for NCIS, all of it. He said yes, 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 and yes, absolutely. So when I go, it's always a thank you, really, and um, maybe just saying, hey, we need more money. <laughs> we know you said yes last year to $2 billion. This year we need 6.1, you know. Um, I think one of the frustrating things uh, might be when he's unable to meet with us. I mean, I've had three successful meetings, right? Um, he's a childhood friend of mine, so he really makes it a point at being present. I always don't expect him to come. So when he shows up, it's like I'm with a bunch of other advocates. You know, it's really awesome for them to see the connectivity that we still have from childhood to now, but that he's this person who is fighting on our behalf and making a change, you know, in Washington. But a lot of times they're voting on things. And so you do meet with maybe a staffer, but I love that the staffers are prepared um, for the meeting. So if the member isn't present, they come out with the paperwork, like you give them your folder that, of what you want them to know and then you go on with, you know, your information and your ask. And the follow up has really been um, progressive. Sometimes, you know, you call and you just get a voicemail or, you know, no one gets back to you. But when I follow up to say, hey, can you let us know what happened with that vote? I'm always able to get an answer. And I think I walk away with coming back to my community, telling them how important it is to vote. Especially this year, I really pro promoted the census because we might not have, you know, someone in these seats in our community if we don't get counted and they don't think that we have this many people who need to be represented in this many um, parts of the neighborhoods as we break down into zones. So I love that when um, I go, you know, I'm on social media. So I'm always like, hey, I'm at Chuck Schumer's office. Hey, I'm at Hakeem's office. And, you know, people like that and follow that and they support it because they can't believe, like I think um, Lou was saying, they're like larger than life people to some folks, right? You think you'd never meet them. But to see common folks like me go and actually have a meeting, it's um, 
it's delightful and it make it gives people hope. I think I come back and I'm able to really give some positive feedback, at least about what we're doing in our community. And then maybe galvanizing people to do more in their own communities, you know, and asking you like, how, how can you be a part? Well, AACR, you know, go online, join, register, um, stay abreast of the newsletter, do the same thing for American Cancer Society, you know, and kind of equip yourself with the knowledge you need to know because we're all one degree away from cancer. Either we know somebody or we've been affected. Thank you, Diane. And as a, maybe as a quick follow-up, um, do you have any any tips or thoughts for anyone who maybe hasn't done an event like this before and they're kind of on the fence about whether or not it's something that they want to get engaged with? Um, just any thoughts about, you know, why, why they should do this? Um, I think the COVID pandemic is a really good start. <laughs> um, we have been exposed to disparities in our community the century, right? This isn't new information. This just highlighted and exposed it for what it is because we've been forced to stay home and watch it unfold. And I think cancer is a part of that disparity as well. We're always fighting for funding or money to go and research. Like it's a no brainer. I don't understand why we stay negotiating you cutting it versus increasing it when you know that more people are being affected, the mortality rate has increased, and now as an underlying condition, COVID has only made, you know, we're losing more folks, right, at a higher rate. So I think everybody who can and is able to get involved should get involved. And there are many ways to get involved. It's not all about going to, to the Hill. It's not only about, um, you know, showing up in DC, but there, you can make the phone calls. You can write the letters to your own local, you know, um, legislative officials. You can make sure you get out and vote. And it is important because um, we should not be in the middle of a pandemic the way we are right now. We should not still be asking for research to not be cut from cancer research like this disease has been around for so long with no cure or few cures or constantly it's evolving you know i imagine when my mom was diagnosed years ago um with a lump in her breast and it was just this whole radical thing right she's deceased now she was born in 1928 they did not have any of the resources we have now and if not for research and funding and um for people to become more innovative and try to seek out more ways to have people live at least a life of dignity if they have it or if they're, you know, to, to get some sort of treatment, that just should be evident, the way that it's evolved over the years. And people could um, know that they could be affected or a family member could be affected and that's why you should fight. It, it shouldn't be that you, I don't, it shouldn't be stressful, not at all, right? It isn't for everyone, but there are different ways you can advocate. So I don't want people to think that you have to do exactly what the three of us are doing, but there are so many ways you could get involved and call me up. I'd be happy to sh show you where you can get involved <laughs> and how. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, thank you so much, Dawn and Lou and Diane. Um, those are really really awesome and helpful responses. Um, I think really good information for all the advocates who might be tuning in with us on Facebook. Um, I wanted to take, we'll get to questions here in just a second, but I wanted to take just a minute to um, share a little more information about this year's Rally for Medical Research and you know how does a virtual event like this work? And it's something that we've all had to adjust to and I think we've, um, you know, we've, we've been involved and, and helped plan a, a much smaller event um, earlier this summer. And one of the things that we have going for us is um, we're working again with a, a company called Soapbox Consulting, which does a fantastic job of scheduling our meetings. And um, with, with all the hundreds of meetings that will be scheduled, <laughs> it's really important to have, you know, bring in the experts for that. Um, so that's very helpful and they have a lot of resources that they're sharing with us as well to, to help prepare for this event. Um, but you know there are things uh, there are things that will be a little bit different this year in terms of um, the interactions that we can have with everyone and we're really looking for as many ways as possible to make it to make it have the same feel as the rally that we've had in the past while keeping everyone safe and healthy. Um, so just to let you know the 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 Rally Hill Day will take place on September 17th 
And for that, we're going to have all the meetings take place virtually. So those will be um, via phone conference or video conference. Um, it's really up to the individual congressional office, the staff or the member that we're meeting with. So they will tell us, you know, what their, what their preference is. And then um, Soapbox will send out, just like they've done for rallies in the past, for those who have participated before, uh, Soapbox will, will put together a schedule for every single participant and they'll send them a code so that they can access their schedule uh, about a week ahead of time. So you can see all of the meetings and you'll see if they're gonna be by a conference call or a video conference, you'll see who else is on your team. So who else will be joining you for all of your meetings. Um, you'll have you know, the, the dial-in information or the login information that you need. All of that will be shared ahead of time so that you'll be able to prepare We'll also be doing a training the week prior on September 10th, and that'll be um, in some ways similar to the online training we've done in past years, but we're actually going to be combining the online webinar that we would usually do in advance with the training that we would usually do in person. So you'll find out about things like uh, what's what's happening on Capitol Hill right now? What's the state of play? What is, what is Congress doing? Um, what are the obstacles to getting the kind of research funding that we want, um, what are the key points that we need to make, and just kind of reviewing our message so that everyone feels comfortable with it, um, as well as talking about things like um, the logistics, you know, things like, you know, joining, joining the conference calls, using the technology, and things like that. So um, we'll give people plenty of uh, information ahead of time so that they can be prepared. Uh, we'll be providing things like a sample call script for their for their meetings on the 17th um, and other background information that can help them um, prepare. So then on September 16th, the, the day before the Hill Day, uh, typically we would have a reception that evening and we would um, invite everyone who's participating in the rally plus a lot of our uh, you know, friends on Capitol Hill and partner organizations and anyone who wants to come to a reception. Um, so this year, of course, we, we can't do that, but we do like to say it's gonna, it's still going to be open bar. <laughs> it's just going to be your bar. Um, but everyone will be able to, to tune in and uh, hear some remarks from some of our you know, uh, real champions for medical research on Capitol Hill and other leaders um, from the medical research community and, uh, and also get some uh, you know, updates as they head into their meetings the following day. So um, that's kind of what the what the whole event is going to look like in a nutshell. And I think it's um, it's it's going to be it's going to be really interesting, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun uh, to get everybody together online. And again, it is you know it. I know there are always some people who aren't able to come out to DC in person because of you know the the time involved in the travel and the cost involved in the travel and things like that and so hopefully this year we'll have an opportunity to get um you know make this the biggest rally ever in terms of participants because people can join from home so that's a quick overview um of what we can expect for the rally and i wanted to also um I know that Karen introduced Mark before, just to, just to add a note, um, Mark joined us back in February on our congressional relations team at AACR, and he came here with a lot of experience on Capitol Hill, and he's been uh, really a tremendous asset to our work here because he's, he's got uh, a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience and a lot of good connections on the Hill, and he's also been a cancer research advocate uh, for much, much longer than he ever, uh, you know, before he started with AACR. So um, we're really happy to have Mark with us. And I don't know if we have any questions yet. If not, maybe I could uh, ask Mark to talk a little bit about um, some of the resources that we have available for advocates. Do you have any questions so far? Okay. Um, hello, my name is Mark Johnson, and I'm just glad to be here. Um, shout outs again to Karen and Carrie um, for putting this together. 
and all the wonderful advocates that we have here. Um, like Brandon said, um, I started in February and um, prior to that professionally, I worked on the um, Hill all on the um, house side for six years. And it gave me kind of an inside perspective on how the Hill works. But in addition to professionally, um, like many of us here, um, I also dealt with um, cancer, not personally, but my mother had pancreatic cancer. And uh, she got it in 2007. And unlike many, um, she lived past the, the six to eight uh, month stage that most people do. And um, she lived on for five years and passed on in 2012. So um, prior to her passing, uh, I told her that if I ever get the chance um, to work for a cancer organization, I'm gonna try to do so to use my inside knowledge of the Hill to help other people um, with regards to advocacy. So this opportunity with AACR came up, I pounced on it, thank God they hired me and now I'm here. And uh, with with my inside perspective, I wanted to, um, you know, Lou and Dawn and Diane, they're pros. They, they know what they're doing. They probably know it better than me. I can tell you they know it better than most professional um, lobbyists. So they're, they're great. But for those who may not know, um, ACR came up with a advocacy toolkit. And basically, um, it's going to provide you with the necessary tools um, to communicate effectively with policymakers and their staff. Um, and in, prepara in preparation for a Hill Day like the rally, advocates will need to know the structure of a meeting um, with members of Congress and their staff. So the pre-meeting, you know, everything on how to dress and how to address a member of Congress, um, you know, who the staffer they're going to meet with and so on and so forth. Maybe the legislation that they introduced um, regarding um, cancer funding um, or cancer research. Um, you know, what do you say during the meeting and some of the things that you do after the meeting. So these are things that you're going to have to know. And um, Diane and Dawn, they, they kind of went into this um, earlier. Um, you know, you may need, you may want to know where to research legislation. Um, you may want to become acquainted with some of those weird esoteric legislative words that, you know, we hear members and staff talk about. So the advocacy toolkit will provide answers um, to those questions if you have them. So that's what it's here for. Um, we have it on our website right now. Um, we have the actual webinar and we have the actual um, uh, slide deck that you can um, print out yourself um, for future reference. And so to find the um, tool guide, um, you'll go to, I'm going to say this slow, um, aacr.org forward slash professionals forward slash policy dash and the word and dash advocacy. And when you get to the page, on the left-hand side of the page, you'll see um, some green buttons, and one of them says advocacy tools. So when you click on that, you'll see a list of items, and one of the items will be AACR policy webinars. And when you click on that, you will see our AACR advocacy webinar. And on top um, of that, you'll see a link to where you can download the slide deck and you can save it or print it, whatever you, you feel the need to do. And um, mentioned in the webinar, um, you'll, we have an advocacy dictionary. Um, as I was speaking before, you know, staffers and members will sometimes spit out words and, and terms that, you know, for beginning advocates, they just, they may not have an idea what they mean. So we created a dictionary that will help them with that. And the link, <clears throat> excuse me, the link to the advocacy dictionary um, is on the webinar and the slide deck. Matter of fact, when you click on the advocacy tools um, button, um, some things will appear under it and the advocacy dictionary is one of those things. So you can, you can look at that there as well. And, um, you know, sometimes these webinars, um, they don't answer every single question. So 
If you have any questions, um, please contact me. My email address is mark, M-A-R-C, not a K, but a C, um, dot johnson at aacr.org. And so um, please send questions my way. It's, it's a blessing to be here. Thank God for all you um, wonderful advocates. And I will kick it back to Brandon. Thank you very much, Mark. I uh, really want to thank Mark for his leadership on developing that toolkit. And, and again, to thank Diane for her participation in that as well. Yes. Um, so I think uh, what I wanted to do is just uh, make sure you all have the information that you really need for the Rally for Medical Research, which is um, the website, uh, which makes it really easy for you to register. So let me see if I can share my screen, trying advanced, <laughs> advanced Zoom um, functions right now. That's not, you okay. Should okay, you found it? I found it, but it's the, uh... okay. Sure. okay, there working? you go. Okay. Great. Um, so here is the Rally website, rallyformedicalresearch.org. And you'll see right up here at the top, this red button to register. So just put in your information there and that'll get you on the list. Um, we'll be sending out some updates soon so that you're aware of uh, upcoming things like the training and the registration. But you can also browse the Rally website and find out a little bit more about um, the partner organizations that are involved, who's sponsoring the Rally this year. Um, we have some items for you to take a look at in the toolkit already, um, such as this great I Rally for template, which you can print out and uh, share why you rally for medical research on social media. And um, we have great photos from previous years as well. So. Um, definitely take a look at the Rally website, and uh, you can you can always reach out to um, Mark or me, or you'll find an email address on the on the Rally website as well. And um, so our deadline, our initial deadline for registration is August 24th. We'd like to get everyone uh, possible registered by that date, so that we can plan for you to come and start scheduling your meetings. So um, please do take a look there. And, uh, and get signed up. Um, everyone who registers can expect to have uh, three to four uh, meetings by phone or video conference during the day on September 17th. So that would be, um, for most everyone, that'll be meetings with your two senators or their staff and then your representative. And then in some cases, um, if you're open to it, we might ask you to, to uh, also join a meeting with another representative that's in your state. So with that, I um, wanted to see if we had any questions that came up. I don't think so, but let me just do a quick check. No questions. Um, we do yeah, no questions. Um, and someone just made a point that there's so many ways to get involved. So we want to make sure that people are involved. And of course, we're still looking for advocates um, from various states. So um, you can also link that. Um, I believe it's already linked in the Facebook uh, comments, the states that we're really looking for. But yeah, we want people to sign up and to share this opportunity with other people. Hey, Karen. Uh I usually get sponsored by the uh, Cindy Kimmel or Jefferson. Do you still need to be sponsored or do we go in, should I contact Jefferson, see if they're still going to have a, uh, a group themselves or should I go solo? Uh, what would you suggest? Um, so, yeah, go ahead, Brandon. Yeah, oh, that's a great question, Lou. So I think in terms of... Um, you know, since we since we wouldn't have anyone sponsoring for people's uh, you know travel to come here this year, yeah. we would still love for them to it, you know spread the message um, throughout the institution and and the community um, because we'd love to get um, as I said to make this the biggest rally ever. So mm -hmm. the more the merrier. Um, please do ask them to share the message um, within 
the, the entire community there. And uh, we'd love to get more people to sign up and participate. Yeah, I have, I have a couple of meetings this week, uh, later this week on uh, for Jefferson and uh, and then I'm also on a, a NTBS. Uh, they have a hill itself, but I might try to get some of those people involved too. I'm on the committee for that too. So okay. I'll, spread, I'll spread the word in my advocacy uh, world. That would be great. Thank you, Lou. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I just wanted to to give one minute if um, if Dawn and Diane and Lou, if, if you all had any, any closing thoughts or anything else that you wanted to share with our advocates before we go. I just want to thank uh, everybody here uh, for the opportunity to be uh, part of this. What you, uh, you find people uh, anytime I get to further my advocacy, I consider it a blessing, uh, especially what we do and uh, what you do. We're just we're a small part of it, but uh, I know the logistics are phenomenal. What it goes into, and uh, all I have to do is show up. But uh, I appreciate all the work and effort, and I'm sure it's going to be a lot more work and effort this year. But uh, I just want to thank you all, and I look forward to uh, virtually meeting, uh, virtually meeting, and hopefully next year we'll we'll get to uh, have that open bar. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, as a survivor, I just wanted to say thank you to you guys as well because you don't know the impact you guys have on us. It gives um, so much fulfillment to be able to, one, be alive, right? Be blessed and understand that you are blessed to be alive, right? Because I had stage three colon cancer at age 44. And so most people don't advocate. When we go to the Hill, I'm usually the speaker because most people don't live beyond that diagnosis. So in my um, learning that, I made it my business to be present, you know, whether I'm a speaker or I'm not, but to show up so that they know people who look like me are being affected and that the screening age of 50 needs to be lowered. And yeah. so it has been recommended to be lowered to 45, but it, insurances are still giving pushback. So it's never going to not be a reason to show up at Capitol Hill for something and get your feet wet. It's not that hard. Again, Lou said it perfectly. You, we elect them, you know, so technically they work for us. Mm -hmm. But you have to show up and be present and be part of the solution. And that's in any part of advocacy, right? Maybe it's not cancer advocacy for you. Maybe it's affordable and quality food in your community. Maybe it's um, we need better services in our hospitals. But whatever the cause is that you have recognized, you know, I think we are, um, Representative John Lewis told us, right, get into some good and necessary trouble. Mm -hmm. So for things to improve, we certainly have to have a voice and be heard. So I would encourage everyone to find that voice, how you could be heard, how you could lend your voice so that we can improve our world. Because right now it is looking very sketchy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, thanks again for having me um, be a part of this uh, session. And also I'd like to encourage everyone who's listening or who's uh, considering being a part of the uh, rally for medical research to go ahead we all had to start at some point we all had a first time we all had a first time meeting with with the representative or their um, staff members and it was always something that every time you go in you don't know who you're meeting in terms of the staff member what their attitude might be like uh, and how they may be feeling or you may feel rushed or you may feel nervous it's really important to understand within the process itself you are trained once you get in with all of the other sessions that are involved and, and follow through with uh, the different types of steps that's given to you, the tools that are given to you, and just relax and understand that everyone's there to hear what you have to share. Your personal story is also welcomed. Um, and, and I think that's really important to put your special touch in your story, to bring it, not being selfish about you know, just being yourself, but it, 
it has a different ring to it when you come in with something personal and how it relates to you or your, your family or your community. Just be there and make sure your voice is heard and you will feel so much better about being able to have had an impact even on that level. So I'm just saying thanks again for you know including me in on this session and you know best wishes and best luck and i would love to be able to participate as often as i can to speak to as many people that i can because what it's doing is going to impact the lives for so many many more years and we can always continue to ask for more so that's that's a part of something that I'd like to be a part of. So even if I'm not able to do it, at least I know at some point I was able to at least add my voice. So thanks. Beautiful. Well, thank you all so much. I, I really want to thank um, Dawn and Lou and Diane um, for, for sharing their time and for sharing their, um, their valuable um, experience and insight. I think that that means a lot to have to hear from you all. Um, as I said, you're all you're all rock star advocates, and we're we're um, honored to have you as as part of our advocacy community at the AACR. So, um, I guess with that, I'll just turn it over to Karen to close out. Yes. Um, well, this was a great discussion. Um, I've learned so much, um, and I just hope that you guys who are listening and who are going to watch the replay that you do join us um, for Rally for Medical Research, that you do sign up by August 24th. Um, you know, this is going to be one of the biggest rallies ever and you can do it from the comfort of your home. So how wonderful is that? Um, <laughs> take advantage of this and, and speak up and let your voice be heard. So um, I wanna just, hopefully we, we were able to answer any questions that people may have had and that, you know, any apprehension that people may, experience or any fear they may have had has been now gone and eliminated um, and that they go ahead, sign up and, um, you know, be a representative for their, their state. Um, so with that said, we're going to stop the slide. Um, and if you have any questions, you guys can reach out to me. You can actually add a comment on this. Um, Brandon and Mark are part of the group, um, as well as our under our advocates, Diane and Dawn and Lou. So you can still ask questions. We'll be here to answer. Um, so thank you for watching. Um, and hopefully we'll, uh, I guess not really see, but maybe hear, <laughs> I don't know, on this <laughs> virtual rally. But whatever it is, thank you for being a part of this. So, thank you for um, having us. Thank you. Yeah, thank How am you. I going to hold the flag this year? That's what I want to know. I'm the band. <laughs> 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 Got to figure that you. one out. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Give have an amazing day, everyone. Chestnut Street. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, bye, guys.